Captain Mike here from Salty Cape and Hoagie Lure Company. You know, at, at Hoagie, we always have all kinds of projects going on. In this case, I am holding one of them, and this happens to be a series of compact fishing outfits that we've been working on. You know, a lot of folks will call this a travel rod, but I find all kinds of local uses to have for a small outfit like this. For starters, this rod fits perfectly in my leaning post. You'll notice that it's the same length as you know, your very traditional inflatable life jacket. So it really doesn't take up much space deconstructed. You can see it's just, just you know, fits in two hands. And um, this particular outfit's about six and a half feet. And uh, you know, like I said, this is a working prototype. So you know, the finished product might be a little different than what I'm holding here. But the concept behind these compact outfits, um, these rods are really designed to fish around the hoagie, hoagie system. And so the outfit I'm holding today is geared for inshore saltwater fishing or medium to heavy duty freshwater fishing. Uh, we are tested, we've tested these outfits on stripers, false albacore. Um, I've taken them camping with my son up in New Hampshire, we've got smallmouth bass, pickerel on these. And they're just, you know, simple, happy, fun to fish with outfits, but they're also durable. Um, you know, they have a very parabolic bend, which is very forgiving when fighting a fish. It's also forgiving when you're pushing the weight of the lure. Uh, these outfits are sized, um, you know, this particular one I'm holding is sized for a 3 8 ounce epoxy, all the way, epoxy jig lure, all the way up to the 7 8 ounce hoagie epoxy jig lure. Uh, but I have used this on, you know, our small poppers. They weigh 3 quarters of an ounce, 4 inch poppers. I've even pushed the limit on this outfit all the way to an ounce and a quarter. And again, that's the, the power of having a very soft parabolic action rod. You can you know, sort of push the envelope a little bit on the weight. Um, the, uh, there's really not a whole lot to say about this outfit other than its compact size and its ability to target a whole bunch of different fish. But um, we're just gonna take a minute to piece it together. Now, all season long, I field tested this outfit with a Shimano Saragossa 5000 class reel because that's what I had and admittedly it was a little clunky, a little heavy for the outfit, but it did fine. So if that's what you have, that's great. Um, if I were to pick the magic size for this outfit, I would say it would either be a 2,500 class or a 3,000 class reel, uh, which is how I have this outfit rigged. But, you know, I'm just gonna take a minute to piece it together and just show you what this outfit looks like when it's assembled, as it's assembled. So for now, I just have this held together with a you know, standard canopy tie. You see four pieces to this outfit. This is a split grip reel. It cuts down the weight a little bit. Gives you a little increased sen sensitivity. We have a hook keeper on the shaft of the rod. And so I'm just gonna start at the bottom and work my way to the top. Now I don't worry too much about the guide alignment till the whole rod is assembled and I'll just adjust as needed. And here it is. Now, you can tell it's not lined up perfectly, but I do that after I get the reel on the outfit. So I'm gonna put on this 2500 class reel. This particular outfit screws down onto the reel. You wanna make sure you have a nice snug fit, but you don't wanna put it on too tightly to crack or break anything, just nice snug fit. Now I have braid on this reel. It's 10 pound, uh, 15 pound test braid with a 10 pound test floral leader. And what pound test you fish this outfit is I think largely based on your own preferences and where you're fishing. But I view this as a traditional like good 12 to 14 pound test outfit. The 15 pound test braid cast nicely with this 10 pound floral leader. I would use this in fresh water and light tackle salt water. Maybe um, there's a lot of stripers and they're a little bigger. I'd upsize to 12 or 15 pound test floral. But you can see I've laced up this guide, the guides with this, the line leader. And this is when I take a minute to make sure my guides are lined up properly because uh, I have the line coming off the reel. You get the first one set. I look down. 
get them all lined up nice and then that's when I give it a nice push. You don't want to jam it on super hard and just make sure they're all in place. Now the one downside to multi-piece rods, whether it's a four piece like this or a two piece, is they do require a little bit of adjusting throughout your casting the day. If you're making heavy casts for Albies or anything, you just want to make sure your, you know, your, your guides are always lined up and that's a problem you know, I've had as a fly fishing guide over the years or whatever. It's not really a problem. You just want to pay attention, make sure your outfit's nice and lined up. And this is true with any multi-piece travel rod, but here you see, um, this is laced up, ready for business. So, in my opinion, if you're fishing in an area that you're not super familiar with, whether you're traveling or you're in a new pond in your town, an excellent starting point is the Hoagie Epoxy Jig Lure. Um, the floor is small enough and compact enough to imitate a lot of small bait fish, but it's also heavy enough to punch through the wind. As you can tell, I have a fairly, you know, like a stiff breeze, October breeze here in my marina in Falmouth on Cape Cod, but it's also not lead. It's not all, it's not like a solid lead lure, so it won't sink and get snagged on the bottom very easily. So it's just a good multi-purpose lure. And here I'm holding the 3 8 ounce version. I'm just gonna tie this on real quick because I wanna show how well this outfit casts this ultralight lure. And to me, that's one of the hard things to find in a compact travel outfit is a rod that's sensitive enough to cast the ultra light stuff, but also strong enough to handle a decent fish. So these outfits are spec to be able to land a false albacore with no problem. And to me, a false albacore is probably the toughest fighting in terms of like inshore, shallow water, um, you know, game fish, but it's also sensitive enough to cast this 3 8 ounce lure, which is maybe on the bigger end of a freshwater pond, but a, certainly a lighter end of, you know, fishing in an estuary or inshore, uh, fishing for striped bass or small bluefish or albies. So this is just a good all around setup. This outfit with this lure, salt or fresh, whether you're in the Keys, Maine, West Coast, East Coast, doesn't matter. You'll catch fish anywhere in the world with this outfit. So you can see from the ripples, um, have a stiff wind coming in from the west, a breeze, I should say, not a wind. But, um, you know, you can see how well this outfit's balanced. It's 2,500 class reel. Now this outfit is six and a half feet. Again, this is a working prototype, so final specs might change from this video. But you'll notice how short this butt section is. And the rod is, um, it's mostly rod. And so the beauty of that is you have the casting range of a seven foot rod. The length of this actual blank, if you were to compare this alongside most seven foot, you know, traditional inshore saltwater spinning outfits, it's the same amount of blank, if not a little more on this. So it can be a little awkward with a smaller butt, but the compromise I'm making here to, ha again, have this outfit be super compact is to put the length in the rod section, not the butt. And, uh, you know, otherwise everything's the same. Split grip, again, a little extra sensitivity, a little lighter outfit. And this epoxy jig is just gonna punch into the wind. And there you go. And you can see it's a relatively like medium power on this outfit. It's not super light on the tip. And just enough stiffness where I could control that lure but when I get this lure in, I'll show you how flexible this rod is. But it's nice and stiff all the way through. So if you're fishing with soft plastics, small plugs, you're gonna have enough power for a hook set. And um, so it's just that happy place between having a fairly stiff action rod, but you can see how quick it goes into that parabolic bend. So it's nice and soft. So if you're fighting a, you know, like a largemouth bass, it's gonna make lots of jumps. It's gonna be forgiven, forgiving in that way. Uh, if you're going to load it up with a little, maybe a little heavier plug than you kind of auto with this outfit, it'll do fine. Um, so this rod is, you know, I, I, it's the best combination I can think of, you know, in terms of all the compromises without giving too much, giving up too much. And uh, so just again, I'm going to show how well this lure punches through that fall breeze. It's going. 
probably can't tell on the camera, but just trust me, launches these things. And uh, so here I go. I love it if in the comment section of wherever you're watching it, you know, share what you would like to see in a travel rod or a compact rod or, um, you know, I've thought about this through my perspective all season long and I've got it, gotten this outfit to this point and it'll be so much better if we just get comments from anglers like yourself here in the comment thread and we'll listen to each and every one. We might have a few questions for you, but uh, you know, we really appreciate any help you can give us with this outfit. Tell us what you want, we'll make it. Yeah.